Picture this, it's the mid-70 seconds, a time when bell-bottoms ruled the fashion scene. Disco beats echoed through the airwaves, and a little show called Three's Company burst onto television screens, bringing with it a tidal wave of laughter and unforgettable moments. Remember that first encounter, the quirky apartment, the hilarious misunderstandings, and the oh-so-relatable characters. It was like a breath of fresh air, a comedic oasis in the desert of everyday life. Maybe it was that iconic theme song that first hooked you, or the sight of John Ritter's slapstick brilliance as he navigated the zany predicaments of sharing a living space with two lovely ladies. And who could forget the brilliant physical comedy of Jack Tripper trying to juggle his way out of one misunderstanding after another. It was a show that invited you to kick back, relax, and enjoy the riotous ride. But it wasn't just about the laughter, Three's company had a unique way of weaving in relatable themes and genuine moments of connection amidst the chaos. The ups and downs of friendships, the challenges of love and career, all served up with a side of side-splitting humor. It became a part of our lives, a show that still brings a smile to our faces as we remember the countless classic moments that have aged like a fine comedic wine. So, let's take a stroll down memory lane and dig into some random facts about the show. Discover the behind-the-scenes stories, the casting decisions that shaped the chemistry of the cast, and the little tidbits that made Three's Company more than just a sitcom. It was a cultural touchstone, a mirror reflecting the joys and struggles of its era. Whether it's reminiscing about Mr. Roper's deadpan humor, Janet's quirky antics, or Chris's endearing charm, Three's Company holds a special place in our hearts. So, get ready to indulge in some trivia that will transport you back to those days of laughter, camaraderie, and comedic brilliance. Joyce DeWitt's leggy legacy, the pantyhose phenomenon of Three's Company in the glitzy realm of 1970s television. The iconic sitcom Three's Company left an indelible mark on popular culture. Amidst the laugh-tracked escapades and witty banter, one peculiar aspect stood out, Joyce DeWitt's steadfast commitment to her hosiery. DeWitt, who portrayed the sensible and level-headed Janet Wood, was renowned for her insistence on donning pantyhose whenever her legs graced the screen. The allure of DeWitt's choice was twofold. Not only did it align seamlessly with Janet Wood's put-together persona, but it also spurred a business venture that resonated far beyond the confines of the small screen. Legs brand pantyhose, a staple of women's fashion at the time, recognized the potential of this on-screen dedication and swiftly sought a collaboration with DeWitt. The resulting endorsement deal catapulted the actress into the realms of legwear fashion and advertising. DeWitt's devotion to pantyhose became synonymous with her public image, elevating her status as a tastemaker in a bygone era. As viewers tuned in week after week to follow the comedic escapades of Three's company, they were unwittingly witnessing the subtle intersection of television, fashion, and branding. While the show's premise and ensemble cast played their parts in its enduring success, DeWitt's decision to champion Hosiri remains an intriguing facet of its legacy. Her commitment not only enriched her character's authenticity, but also exemplified the curious ways in which entertainment and consumer culture intertwine. In hindsight, the enigma of Joyce DeWitt's pantyhose preference paints a vivid snapshot of the 1970s, an era defined by flamboyant fashion and innovative marketing. As the legacy of Three's company lives on through reruns and retrospectives, it's worth remembering the subtle power of an actress fashion choice, one that transformed a simple sitcom into a lasting cultural touchstone. Strained harmony behind the laughter, unveiling Priscilla Barnes' unpleasant stint on Three's company in the annals of television history, Three's company remains a timeless classic, etching its indelible mark on the sitcom landscape. However, beneath the on-screen merriment lay a simmering brew of discord, especially during the tenure of Priscilla Barnes, whose stint on the show she branded as the unhappiest in her career. Barnes, who joined the cast in 1981, replacing Susan Summers, as the smart and sassy Terry Alden bore witness to the show's success amidst an atmosphere she openly loathed. A backstage ambience that had previously drawn chuckles from audiences proved less amusing to the actress. According to insiders, Barnes considered her years on the series a tumultuous period, and her sentiments almost led her to bolt the show even before her debut. 
This clash between Barnes and the show's environment cast a stark shadow on the chemistry that powered the hilarious escapades of the three central characters. And while the chemistry of Jack, Janet, and Chrissy remained infectious on screen, it's notable that the harmony was not shared by the entire ensemble. Despite this, Three's company pushed forward, proving the old adage that the show must go on. And go on it did, etching its legacy as one of the most beloved sitcoms of its era. The entertainment world often conceals its backstage turbulence beneath the glittering facade of humor, and in the case of Three's company, Priscilla Barnes' candid assessment has peeled back a layer of the show's glossy exterior to reveal the poignant complexities that simmered within. Jenna Lee Harrison's role shift amidst ratings slump in Three's Company in the annals of television history. The 1976 series Three's Company stands as a quintessential example of situational comedy. Yet, behind the on-screen hilarity lay a series of backstage maneuvers that captivated viewers just as much. Jenna Lee Harrison, a fresh face to the entertainment scene, stepped into the iconic role of Cindy Snow, the third roommate. Despite her amiable rapport with the cast and crew, Harrison's inexperience became palpable, coinciding with a dip in the show's ratings. This prompted the producers to embark on yet another roommate hunt, marking a pivotal turn in the show's trajectory. The quest for a seamless ensemble was not a novel challenge for the production team. John Ritter, famed for his portrayal of the affable Jack Tripper, had military credentials, having served in the U.S. Navy. Ritter's real-life experiences undoubtedly lent authenticity to his character's peculiar escapades, contributing to the show's irresistible charm. Meanwhile, the revolving door of cast changes introduced Norman Fell and Audra Lindley, who portrayed the ornery Ropers, into the fold. After their own spin-off, the Ropers met an untimely cancellation. The duo returned to Three's company for a final hurrah. Significantly, this episode marked the first absence of Susan Summers, who had been fired earlier, adding an unexpected layer of intrigue to the narrative. Free's company thrived on its uncanny ability to navigate both the humorous and the unexpected. From backstage dynamics to character transformations, the series embodied the capricious spirit of the 1970s television landscape. Unveiling the melodic twist of Three's Company's unchosen path in the annals of television history, Three's Company stands as a beloved sitcom that tickled the funny bones of millions in the late 1970s. Amid the chuckles, however, lies a lesser-known twist that adds a melodious layer to the show's narrative tapestry. Initially, Mickey Ross, the show's creator, and the astute producers saw an opportunity for John Ritter, Joyce DeWitt, and Susan Summers, the trio at the sitcom's core, to lend their vocal talent to its catchy theme song. A seemingly innocuous request, perhaps, but one that the trio decidedly and somewhat ironically rejected. While the notion of their musical prowess did not find its way into the show, life after the apartment's final curtain call would reveal a surprising postscript. In an intriguing turn, Susan Summers, who portrayed the captivating Chrissy Snow, embarked on a surprising second act as a noted Las Vegas singer after her tenure on Three's Company. This unexpected evolution, a parallel universe of sorts, casts a wistful shadow over the initial rejection of a song-laden entry to the sitcom's world. Yet, in the grand tapestry of showbiz, twists are not uncommon. Audra Lindley, who brought Helen Roper to life, is a case in point. She sported a flamboyant red curly wig to embody Mrs. Roper's character, concealing her naturally blonde straight hair. This visual transformation speaks to the lengths actors go to inhabit the roles that become an integral part of their identities. But among the players in this comedic saga, John Ritter holds a unique distinction. As the affable Jack Tripper, Ritter remains the sole cast member to grace the screen in every episode. An unparalleled commitment that solidified his presence as the comedic heartbeat of Three's company. The show's anecdotes, often hidden beneath the laughter, offer a deeper appreciation for the actors' choices and the paths they ventured after the series concluded. These morsels of trivia illuminate a world where comedy and melody converged, leaving behind a legacy that continues to resonate with fans both new and nostalgic. And so, in the world of Three's company, a tapestry of irony, transformations, and steadfast commitment unfurls, showcasing the hidden layers behind the laughter. 
Freeze Company unveiling and told homage in the midst of slapstick humor and comic camaraderie. The 1976 TV series Three's Company holds a heartfelt tribute that often goes unnoticed by even its ardent fans. Amidst the laughter and lightheartedness, a poignant nod from John Ritter to his late father, Tex Ritter, is tucked away in the pilot episode. During a pivotal moment in the pilot episode, the affable character Jack delivers the line, well, you know you have to learn to trot before you can gallop. Who said that? The quip is met with hearty laughter from the audience, yet the origin of the line holds deeper significance. John Ritter, who portrayed Jack, subtly wove this line into the script as a tribute to his father, Tex Ritter, a legendary country musician and actor. This connection pays homage to his father's wisdom and memory a subtle touch that reveals the actor's profound emotional resonance with his role. The brilliance of Three's company doesn't rest solely in its quick-witted banter or situational humor, but in the layers of sentiment that often escape casual observation. John Ritter's tribute to his late father remains an enduring testament to the show's complexity, blending laughter with a touch of heartfelt nostalgia. As we celebrate the series' legacy, let us not merely revel in its laughter, but also recognize the heartfelt nuances that make Three's Company an indelible chapter in television history. In every chuckle, snort, and witty retort lies a story deeper than the superficial gags, making this sitcom a timeless treasure. As we wrap up this journey down memory lane, I urge you to take a moment and embrace the laughter, the camaraderie, and the timeless charm that the 1976 TV series Three's Company brought into our lives. Like a treasured keepsake, this show has nestled its way into the tapestry of our memories, a reminder of an era when comedy was a bridge connecting hearts and homes. Perhaps you found a reflection of your own friendships in the delightful chaos that ensued in that Santa Monica apartment. Or maybe you discovered a source of comfort in the comedic misunderstandings that were emblematic of the show. Whether it was Jack, Janet, Chrissy, or Mr. Roper, each character was a unique thread woven into the rich fabric of your personal connection to the series. So, as the curtain falls on this moment of reflection, I encourage you to share your cherished moments, the scenes that still make you smile, and the quirks that you've carried with you through the years. Let your voice join the chorus of those who have found solace, joy, and connection in the world of Three's Company. Thank you for allowing me to accompany you on this trip down memory lane. Your time and enthusiasm are truly appreciated, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts and memories about the show. Until we meet again, keep the laughter alive and the memories vivid. Warmest regards.